the first thing that I want to try and overcome is this idea, this, this myth around systems that even if you created the systems, your team wouldn't follow them anyway. Like I, I hear that quite frequently. Even businesses that have systems in place, they're like, well, we have these systems, but no one actually looks at them and they get outdated. So part of what we talked about in that organise phase was how do we marry in the project management software to create a little bit more accountability. But then there needs to become the enforcement of that as well. That's like the next piece. And we need to cultivate the system's culture. And it, the resistance that you will get typically is for your existing staff. When you're trying to bring something new to them and saying, hey, we're going to try and do some systems-based uh, approach to our business, th there may be resistance there. But typically for new staff, you don't get that resistance because that's all they've ever known. So I want to kind of talk about this relationship between a, uh, a visionary and an integrator. We'll talk about how we can find the right person on your leadership team to drive this through and make sure that, that the system's culture gets embraced. So I'll just paint a little bit of a, a picture uh, when thinking about a business owner, the portrait of a business owner. I owned a digital agency for, well, I still own it, but I worked in it for a little over 10 years. And I, as I built that up, it very much grew organically. And every time I would come up with a problem, I'd just try and figure out how do I solve that problem right now. And then when I look back, it kind of felt like I'd built almost a little bit like a Frankenstein style business where I just cobbled a whole lot of things together, whether it was different software pieces or different solutions and we were really good in one area but we were weak in other areas. Uh, and that was because I didn't have a, a fully integrated approach. And it, towards the end of that 10 years, it very much felt like the business was going sideways. We really hadn't done much for the past sort of few years or that those last few years of the business. My skill and where I'm probably strongest is I'm great with ideas. A lot of business owners are. You can come up with ideas, you can innovate, and you're a quick starter, you get things off the ground, you're good at going into the future and imagining what the business might look like when it's complete, and then you come back to the moment and think, okay, well, how do I now build that? And, and that's what I was strong at. And I used to think that I was a good people manager as well. I thought, you know, I, I get on well with the staff. I, um, oftentimes, business owners like to be liked. Um, they are people pleasers and, and they start a business to serve the customer and they'll bend over backwards for the customer and oftentimes that means they're saying, yes, we can do this, yes, we can do that and you do that to win the work. Uh, but sometimes that you're saying yes to a customer who isn't your target audience. They're asking for a very customised solution of your products and services. That means that you have to be very closely involved in the delivery because you've accepted something outside of your sweet spot. So when it came to managing the team, I found I wasn't a great people manager. I can often be unclear. I was too nice. I would micromanage the situation with, with the team, trying to get things just right. I mean, you saw it with the venue where I'm kind of stepping in, trying to make sure that everything is perfect when I should have probably just stepped back and let the team do it. And these are some common characteristics. And it wasn't until I found my Melissa, you can see her uh, up the, the top there. She's the CEO of Melbourne SEO Services and she compliments me. She's, wow. She's a slower starter than I am. She's much more detail orientated. She is a systems person. I'm up here talking about systems and I love the result that systems gives you, but, but I, I don't hop in there and love writing out the systems and doing all of the detail. My wife is a much more systemized person than I am. She's got this, you know, when we go camping or on holidays, she's got these big detailed checklists of what needs to happen to make sure that we don't forget anything. So what you want to do is figure out who you are, what your strengths are, and then find the person to complement you. So you don't have to be great at systems. Uh, and oftentimes, you can fall in love with the idea of what systems can provide, but you want to find that, that person that complements you. She, Melissa doesn't need to be liked by the staff. She, she's a great people manager. She can say, this is what needs to be done. It's your responsibility. She can step back and let them do it on their own. And if the team member falls over and makes a mistake, that's okay. Well, let's reassess what happened here. Uh, and decide, do we need to make adjustments to the systems and processes? And that's, that's the type of person that you want to be looking for 
if you're a, a business owner who, who got the business up to a certain stage. Once I put her in charge and then I started to supporting her decisions, there was a little bit of a period there where there was a handover where I was still stepping in and I was telling Melissa, oh, you know, we should do this that way or it's like I wanted to protect her. I, di I didn't want her to have the mistake and I thought I could see the mistake that was coming so I would try and help and then that would end up being the micromanaging. But when I stepped back, gave her the f freedom to be able to succeed and fail and, and put her in charge where she runs it now, she'll, like oftentimes, whatever I'm working on right now feels like the most important thing and I'll email it through to a team member and I'll say, I've got to get this graphics done and I've got to get it delivered by tomorrow. Can you make sure it gets done? Uh, and I'll put pressure on the team member. What I don't take into account is all of the other projects that the team is working on and then that puts those projects out of kilter and then I just come in and make a mess of things and Melissa's like, we've got to stop doing this. She posted a bulletin inside Asana saying, next time Dave sends you an urgent message, um, don't, like, it must be done, don't follow it, don't do it. It needs to come through me first and it needs to be assigned out. We need to give reasonable timelines and make sure that we're not throwing things out. And if it will throw things out, Melissa will say, we can do that, but I just want you to understand it's going to cause this and this and this problem. Do you still want to do it? And, and now I'm... It's, it's forcing me to, to plan things out better and, and let her do her job without me kind of coming in and, and sending the team off on a wild goose chase. That's another thing that um, great, that relationship between your visionary and your integrator, um, that, that visionary will come up with ideas and they'll lob them into the team, but you need a filter before it hits the team. Otherwise, it's very jarring for the team. They'll go, we're heading in this direction. You'll come up with a fantastic idea. Now we're heading in this direction. Everybody's like, what just happened here? Like, we're just complete, weren't we going this way? So, so what the, the, the integrator will do, will deliver it through to the team. That means it's much easier for them to get on board and, and make sure that everybody's heading in the right direction.